Welcome to Ella's Beef Easter's Radio Air Check and Classic TV Channel. This is the most, for the Bahamas, deadliest catastrophic hurricane that we have seen in modern times. There will be consequences. What they are, we are still finding out. Let us go now to the nation's second city, to the capital of Grand Bahama, Freeport. Good afternoon, Bahamas, and welcome to our continued coverage on this hurricane. Weather conditions have been deteriorating since early this morning, and as Hurricane Dorian considered the strongest hurricane in modern record in the northern Bahamas launch its assault at this hour. We are literally under the gun, Abaco in particular, and so uh, we begin now with Chief Meteorologist Siobhan Moxie Bonaby, who is joining us live. Thank you so much for being with us, and, and just give us the latest coordinates. Okay, good evening. Good afternoon, Bahamas. Thank you for having me, um, Shishina. At 2 p.m., Hurricane Dorian was located near latitude 26.5 degrees north, longitude 77.0 degrees west. For me, as somebody who's been in weather for almost 30 years now, I have never experienced a, a hurricane of this magnitude. Mm -hmm. And so I just wish to say to all residents in the Northern Islands, particularly um, Abaco, Grand Bahama, Bimini, and the surrounding Keys, to brace themselves for what seemed to be a long haul in the fact that the hurricane is moving at seven miles per hour. That is a long time to be moving across the islands with such catastrophic winds. When we looked at the storm, it started off at eight miles an hour as it drew near uh, to Abaco, and then it just, just just tapered off to seven miles an hour. Is there a possibility that this thing is going to slow down further? And if it does slow down further, what does that mean for the Abacos that is now being pounded by the storm and Grand Bahama that's next? Well, if there's continuous slowing of the storm, that spells really, really uh, bad, almost disastrous. And uh, we have a lot of uh, concerns coming out of West Grand Bahama and Freeport as it relates to the fishing home at the road. We'll close at 3 o'clock today. Our Jamila Mizik visited that area and she filed this report. Police officers from the traffic division are monitoring the Fishing Hole Road Bridge as residents make their way into and out of West Grand's Bahama. Now for years, this area has been considered a major flooding zone, making it impassable for residents. Right now we had the um, Fishing Hole Road, um, that's at the new bridge. Uh, we were here from about uh, 12. And what we are here really doing is that as you look behind me, you can see that uh, persons now or the public have access to the new bridge. And uh, that is just in the event if or come in and we open the waters, they would have an access uh, still to get into the free air. Now, the new bridge will be open uh, for a while. It was our intentions to close it at, uh, at 3 p.m. Uh, based on the uh, But at some point, you want to get uh, make those are clearly before the show. Like I say, we just have use of the bridge um, as a relate to the solder road that is much lower and in case if the water um, surge comes in then like I say we still have access for persons to pass. We're getting a lot of uh, video coming in now from the island of Abaco um, and a lot of calls as well coming mm -hmm. in. Uh, one family in particular they are asking that if once the center passes over Abaco if they can at this point evacuate uh, what they are calling during this kind of calm period. This is a family with a very young child and they are saying that their rooftop is off, water is pouring in and they really need to leave. Uh, what is your advice to them? Uh, my advice is if you have any type of um, communications at all and I'm to try to see if you can get uh, some emergency response person to find you if the uh, opportunity warrants, it's going to be a very small window with the eye because the eye is not big. The diameter is only about 15 miles. So um, that would be a very small window of crossing. And perhaps the um, emergency response people can come and see if they can assist. But just try to stay. Don't, don't venture out of your home at all. Yeah. I would point um, for persons here 
in the island of Grand Bahama and those who have remained on um, uh, the coastlines, if they want to evacuate, is it safe for them to do so? Well, um, I think all evacuate, for the most part, unless it's mostly an emergency situation, I, I, I believe that most of the evacuation um, efforts are sort of drawn back mm -hmm. because if um, tropical storm force winds and gusts have already reached the city of Freeport mm -hmm. and we have periods of um, gusty showers and gusty winds so you're going to start putting the emergency response people in a bit of a bind. Um, I, but again, I implore everyone who may still feel that they're dwellings are not sound and they feel like you know with the pressure of the storm coming try to still contact um, NEMA and I'm sure um, if assistance can be given it will be given. And after 185 miles per hour does the storm go? I know you said there's no category 6 so right now it's category 5 and whatever miles per hour it reached at this point that is it remains a category 5. Yes it will remain. So we are, the, are at the worst uh, stage right yes. now. Um, Dorian would go down as the strongest um, hurricane to ever make landfall in the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. My God. As you do know, um, we've been saying from yesterday, day before, to residents of uh, East Grand Bahama and those folks in Abaco to seek shelter because there was a, a, a very tight gut feeling mm -hmm. that uh, this was not going to be just any kind of storm, that this was going to be one of those storms that was going to be uh, impacting uh, the entire northern Bahamas. We've seen that now. We've seen the pictures that are coming in yeah. and seeing what's happening in Abaco, and now very quickly the eastern end of Grand Bahama is going to be facing the same kind yeah. of repetition that we saw earlier today. Yeah. Um, I know for you, you've been sending out the, the various forecasts. You heard the Deputy Prime Minister also said, please take advantage of that last run to get out of the Eastern District. Now it's here. Mm -hmm. um, just five minutes ago, we had another rain band come right. through here and we could mm -hmm. hardly continue a situation as we continually go downhill later on into the afternoon. Mm -hmm, exactly. And so it is imperative uh, when you're given the emergency um, heat to come out, come out evening. The bands, like you said, will come more frequently. The wind gusts are going to be more. The sustained winds is going to be more. So um, all I can say is for those who, you know, feeling depression, because sometimes we say, well, maybe we can write it out, but then when we realize the magnitude of the situation, you know, we realize that we need to get out. So um, conditions are, are deteriorating, but it's possible that you may still be able to get assistance. So again, I, um, I will say, please give NEMA a call mm -hmm. and see what um, assistance can be given at this time. Um, other, if there's no assistance that can be given, we um be asking to you know for you to stay in your homes and if condition outside of your home become uh, worse try to get to the interior portion of the home as much as possible and um, just hunker down and hope for the best at this point. And are tornadoes expected to come along with this storm? Um, generally, the better chance of a tornado is normally when our land itself. So there's, you, can, you can never rule out a tornado with a land falling hurricane and there, in this instance there will be no different here. So there is also a chance of tornado activity. Mm -hmm. Siobhan, the question is for a lot, a lot of people are asking, how long is this going to last? Mm -hmm. um, that's the question and unfortunately it doesn't seem like Dorian is in no way and no shape intending to go quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, it is forecasting to gradually come to a slower pace than the seven miles an hour that is moving now. So generally from the part, from the start of the onset of tropical storm force winds ahead of Dorian to the time that the tropical storm force winds cease to be after Dorian, that total cross um, should be anywhere between 48 to 54 hours. Wow. And so we are going to be in this for some time to come. And we saw from the actual outlay of the storm, the front portion of it very compact and tight right. as you get into the eye wall. But behind it, yes. there is a trail of, uh, of very severe weather that is actually going to be impacting uh, the northern Bahamas for quite some time and even some parts of uh, Abaco and Bimini as well. Yes, well, um, like you said, now that the, the storm is over uh, Marsh Harbor, so Grand Bahama and parts of Bimini will be getting that northeasterly flow. Right. So the, the north coast will be 
impacted with um, water piling up and coming in, and we know that the north coast of Grand Bahama is very susceptible to flooding. Right. So that will continue, and even for um, Abaco itself, now that the, the, the center will be more shifting to the west, they will have a, a southeasterly flow, so mm -hmm. they'll be pulling water from the Atlantic, so the east coast will be more susceptible to the storm surge coming in because strong southeast winds will be pushing in. So um, all I can say is if you need assistance, if you feel that you might still want to come out of your area, contact NEMA and see if they can assist you at this point. And, and of course, also, those NEMA do, numbers, uh, 351-4902, 351-4903, 351-4904. Uh, you can call them for any questions, concerns, uh, if, if you have any emergencies, that um, emergency operation center, they are active, they are down there, and they are willing to assist. And also keep in mind, too, uh, what, what, what is normally a good practice is have a number right then in that area that you can reach and so that just as well uh, to make sure that we keep you abreast of what's going on. And also don't forget, if you can't get uh, the, the NEMA headquarters right away, um, you can reach us here as well very, very quickly so we can get the message to Siobhan and those that are working here within the command center to make sure that all the necessary information gets out uh, to you very, very quickly. And, um, you know, it was kind of interesting this, this morning when I left here and uh, we saw the various uh, uh, wildlife flying around. I'm like, that's not a good sign, mm -hmm. you know. And then now and then it is all over. So please listen to Siobhan and the... the the where to see uh, uh, response folks. Mm -hmm. One of the videos that I would have uh, seen earlier, I think that was coming from Long Island, a group of young boys uh, jumping from off of the dock into the ocean, jumping from the rooftop. You would have seen that yes. video as well. And you see the waves just gushing. And I'm saying, oh my gosh, this is serious. Not sure if they understand how serious this is. Well, um, all I can say is, uh, Hurricane Dorian is going to generate very destructive waves, mm -hmm. life-threatening waves. So, um, you know, there will always be some daredevils and trill seekers, um, but, you know, your life is very valuable. You only have one. And so while I know it might feel exciting to tempt Mother Nature, at uh, the end of the day, Mother Nature tend to win out most of the time. Mm -hmm. And so I will implore everyone to please stay in your homes if you don't have to go out, uh, particularly those um, who are under the warning right now, like Abaco, Grand Bahama, Bimini, and the surrounding Keys. No one should really be out of their homes at this point. The only way you should be leaving your home if you have, if you, if you're asking for emergency assistance and you're waiting for an assi um, the assistant to come, otherwise you ought to stay in your home. And for those of you who probably didn't get a chance to see the video, it's on your screen now. If you take a look, Ricardo, I'm not sure if you had an opportunity mm -hmm. to see this. This is, I mean, this is beyond crazy. You know, when you look at this kind of activity, you know, that's where uh, some parental guidance needs to also uh, come into place. Uh, this storm is again affecting the, you know, just about the central as well as the northern Bahamas and the waves are going to be around for a while. Now the thing is too, there are also undercurrents that's yes. there as well. And uh, you know, you hear about how these undercurrents and you know, these young guys jumping off that, this undercurrent, they could be here at the dock and about another two minutes or so, oh, about a half a mile a away, get sucked mm -hmm. by the undercurrents mm -hmm. that is there. So this is not a wise uh, uh, position to be in or to be practicing. Uh, during this time of the storm and the best bet like uh, we've been saying is just stay indoors uh, please be safe we do not want to have to report any kind of uh, casualties accordingly because uh, the the call has been issued mm -hmm. stay at home stay put uh, find uh, yourself with family and friends and do the right thing okay make sure you stay there and Siobhan, please tell us, uh, what could Bimini expect and, and what's the weather now like in Bimini? And, and residents there have been messaging us and asking of us if uh, they are in the all clear and what, what they can, um, what type of uh, impact can they expect? So just uh, talk to our residents over there in Bimini. No, Bimini, you're not in the all clear. Um, you should begin experiencing tropical storm force winds by this evening near the six o'clock because the hurricane um, Dorian has strengthened to a very strong category five hurricane the wind field with dorian has already um have, has also expanded hence you're gonna have tropical storm force wind now move from 105 miles out 
um, extended to now 140 miles. So Bimini will be under tropical storm force winds by this evening. And if the track continues on a westward motion, because um, at present it's forecast at some point gradually go to the west, northwest, and northwest. And like I said yesterday, until we actually see a turn, we have to assume that the hurricane is going to more or less go east to west across the island of Grand Bahama. Mm -hmm. If that's the case and the center end up, um, ends very close to West Bend, then Bimini um, should be receiving very close to hurricane force winds. So please, no, uh, by no means Bimini, you're out of the woods. Just I know it might seem like you've been waiting forever, but bear, um, be mindful that tropical storm force winds will begin to impact your area by this evening. And so everyone needs to understand that this is not anything to take lightly. Not at all. And of course, we are in uncharted territory, strongest hurricane in the uh, uh, modern record for the North, Northwest Bahamas. Um, at this point, what do we say? Well, we need to say to our visit to our, our residents out there that if you have no reason to even poke your head out the window, uh, don't even bother, our, especially our folks in Abaco. We want you guys to understand that the storm is upon you, and so there is, and it's going to be a little while mm -hmm. uh, before uh, we do in turn uh, uh, see the end of it. And two, um, in coming back, we notice a lot of uh, uh, folks are still on the roads, mm -hmm. okay? That now needs to cease to very quickly because, again, we're seeing these numerous bands of rain and gust that is passing through and uh, high gusts in some cases. Yes. And so there will be some uh, missiles and various other...